First of all, I would like to welcome Mr. V. R. Jadhav, Secretary, MSPT, Mrs. S. H. Chauhan from MSPT, and Mr. H. S. Banerjee, the Executive Chairman of Lima, the principals and the trustees of various politics and who have come from all parts of Maharashtra, my principal, Mr. Prashant Patil, and my faculty members. I welcome you all on this auspicious day of Engineers Day at this program conducted by Maharashtra State Board of Technical Education on sensitization workshop. I will express only, I will put my few words only, very few words, because actually this is a workshop being conducted by MSBT. I wish that they should throw more light on the subject. As a chairman, I would like to express my few words. Past two to three months has been very much crucial for the entire higher technical education, specific, especially polytechnic. Maharashtra has got, yesterday, my principal Prashant Patel told me, sir, you have to uh, attend the program. I said, what is the topic? I said, this is the, he said, this is the topic. And I said, give me a few data and statistics so that it will be easier for me. And he gave me some important data. Maharashtra has got 550 polytechnics and 1.172,000 1, intake is there. And it's very unfortunate in state like Maharashtra, which is a role model for the entire country, only 45% seats have been filled up. That is 55% seats are vacant. And due to no fault of these polytechnics, because I know the administration of MSBT is very much evolved and matured and I think every twice in a year they visit all the polytechnics, they verify and scrutinize the infrastructure of all the polytechnics and the faculties and everything. That means MSBT itself is scrutinizing the quality of all the polytechnics and in spite of that, 55% seats of these polytechnics are vacant. And as per the government norm, the polytechnics will have to maintain the infrastructure, the faculties, everything. Balaji sir, we have to pay the six pay commission to all the faculties, even then, even then, due to no fault of this. I'm, I'm uh, talking about all the politics. All politics in Maharashtra, they are doing they are very well. Uh, even after that, dropout is also there. 20 to 30 percent is dropout in the polytechnics. Now you can imagine the hardship being faced by the polytechnics. They say the employability. Most of the students in polytechnic, they opt for higher studies. Miss employment is not a problem for polytechnic. Even then, last year we conducted pool campus. There, more than 50 industries participated, and more than 600 students got placement. Placement is not a problem for the polytechnics. We also try. I, I have kept on asking my faculties that in, include some value-added programs and other things. But they say that if they are overburdened, students are overloaded because the syllabus is like that. There is no room for um, extracurricular activities and other things. Because syllabus is like that. Passing the exam is itself a challenge for the polytechnic students. So these are the challenges being faced by the polytechnics. Now, I was just doing some research work on my uh, research on, on, such, on this topic. I came to know through the net only why the situation is like this. Is this only happening only in this country or this has become the global phenomenon? I'm sorry to say this is not happening outside the country. Abroad, 
the situation is much better as compared to our country, at least in higher technical education. For example, let us take example of US. US we, uh, we consider US as a benchmark for everything. We compare ourselves with that, where we stand like that. Now see, very interesting figure. It will be very much useful for all the principles of the polytechnics. US is a 16, US is a 16 trillion dollar economy. We all know this. Against 16 trillion dollar economy of US, they produce 1 lakh engineer every year. Means for 16 trillion dollar economy, 1 lakh engineers. Whereas India, our country, our country is 2 trillion dollar economy and against 2 trillion dollar economy, we produce 15 lakh engineers every year. Now see the disparity, this is a disparity. Second point, the mass recruiter earlier, the manufacturing sector was the mass recruiter. And manufacturing sector, it comprises of 17, 17% 17 of the overall GDP. But and this and this used to this this manufacturing sector used to employ most of the engineers every year. But now, for the last three, four years, due to some unavoidable reasons, which we should not disclose at this level, the manufacturing sector is shrinking. It's dropping down. And that's why we are witnessing the job loss in the core sector of engineering. That's why you can see the very few takers are for mechanical, civil, and electrical engineering. Because the manufacturing, manufacturing sector is shrinking. Now, the other, other sector, that is the information technology, IT. IT has grown very much steadily from 0 to 5%. And they engage most of the IT and computer engineers that is in growing sector. But now it has also become stagnant now. Now most of the, if we, if we study, if we look at the sectoral component of the Indian economy, you will see that the most of the sector of the Indian economy, they don't require engineers at all. Like say, tourism, it comprises of 10% of GDP, they don't require engineers. Financial sector, they don't require engineers. Banking, they don't require engineers. Similarly, Travels, tourism, agriculture, pharmacy, medicine, hotels. They don't require engineers at all. The major sector, again, that is the education, they require very little number of engineers. 15% of the GDP, they don't require engineers at all. But even then, most of the students, they opt for the engineering and polytechnics. And this is the major gap between demand and supply. Now you all have assembled for this workshop. Now, when you, I, I would like to call upon the uh, decision makers to look into such kind of thing. Moreover, in, even then, earlier also, the engineering and polytechnic sector was very much promising. But now it is losing its steam. The reason is that most of the students, those who are studying in engineering or polytechnics, they are not aware of the significance of their branch of engineering. If you ask any polytech, if you ask any civil engineers who are passing out from polytechnics or from engineering college, they can't use even the total station. They can't draw the layout of the building. The mechanical engineers, after passing out, they can't even design a simple frame. The computer engineers, they can't disassemble and assemble the computers. Electrical engineers can't do the house wiring. This is a thing you should look into that. To make the programs more interesting, more challenging, what I feel, we should give more focus on the practicals and the projects. Covering the theoretical subject is much easier, I'm telling you, sir. And that's why, over the years, 
they give more emphasis on threat theory. And by giving more exposure on theoretical lectures, we are churning out more like a technical clerks. I would like to advise you, while designing the framing of the syllabus, please give more emphasis on practicals and projects. Many faculties, they don't like, they don't, they, they, they will not subscribe this one because finishing the theoretical subject is much easier than delivering the practical knowledge. And if we include more practical knowledge, more projects, of course, it will increase the value of the program. And again, it can, this, the value can increase. I would not like, I would not like, like to take much of your time. <coughs> finally, I would like to, finally, I would like to request the decision makers to look at the problem. The higher in technical education requires replanning at this juncture. And we, if we want to revive the scope and the future of our technical situation, I would like to call upon all of you to replan, revisit, and try to increase the significance and the value of technical and higher education. Thank you very much. Sir.